Today I'm in Winterset, Iowa, and Winterset is kind of, I guess, known around the world for being the setting for the movie The Bridges of Madison County with Clint Eastwood and Meryl Streep. And I'm in the city park where one of the bridges is, uh, one of the covered bridges is, and there's actually one of the movie's bridges is in this park too, but it wasn't a covered bridge. Good, get to that in a minute. Um, but in this video, I'm going to show you all the bridges. The, uh, all the covered bridges in Madison County and then a few other things and um, I didn't realize just randomly happened to be here on the day that is the Madison County covered bridge festival <laughs> so uh, just dumb luck and so I'm gonna go downtown and, and show you what the festival is and they have a terrific downtown that was featured you know in the movie as well so let's start here in the park they have a a path a, a driving path that goes all the way around the park to see some sights it's a really beautiful day the leaves are changing colors and uh, so let's get the video started our first bridge is the cutler donahoe bridge it was built in 1870 by Eli Cox. This bridge is 79 feet in length and features a pitched roof. It was originally located over the North River near the town of Bevington. It was moved to the park here in 1970. And in 1997, it was renovated at a cost of $35,000. Here is the driving path as it goes from concrete to a gravel road. And you'll see on the right side, there is this little arched pedestrian bridge. And this is where in the movie they had the picnic. And here's the scene. And right behind you, right behind Clint Eastwood there, you can see that bridge. And she gave him her pendant. And so it was kind of a, they got out of you know, out of town a little bit in a way, but they are actually in Winterset for that scene. It, is. it was built in 1921, and it is real close to the Cutler-Donahoe Bridge that we saw first, just, just down the street. Now we're driving back through the park, and a lot of the, the path looks like this. It's really pretty and just, you know, so it's a one-way drive, so you kind of come back a different route, and uh, it's, just, it's just a really nice drive through the trees, and there's some little bridges like this as we head towards the back of the park. This isn't a bridge, obviously, but it's along this pathway, so I thought I would stop and check it out. This is called Clark Tower. It was built in 1926 on the 80th anniversary of the founding of Madison County, so that makes the founding in 1846. Named after Caleb and Ruth Clark, who were early settlers in this area, and gives some great views of the park. It actually, uh, there was a tornado, and, F4 tornado that came through last year and hit the tower, but it survived, so it was definitely built to last. As we leave Clark Tower, the rest of the drive just kind of winds back and around as we head towards the start of our drive at the beginning of the park. As we end our little scenic drive through the park, there's a couple other things here at the end. There's the Bennett Cabin that was built in 1852. Pretty cool to check out. And then a monument showing the discovery of the Red Delicious Apple. We 
took that little 12 mile drive east over here to the town of St. Charles, nice little town. And as you go just east of the town there on the right, you're gonna see the Imus Covered Bridge. This is the oldest remaining covered bridge in Madison County, it was built in 1870. It's 81 feet long. It was originally located west of the town of Patterson, which is nearby. And, and then in 1887, moved over to the town of Hanley. And then 90 years later, in 1977, it was moved here to St. Charles. And then in 1997, it was renovated for right around $32,000. Next bridge is the Hollowell Covered Bridge. This is actually the longest bridge at 122 feet. And if you remember this scene from the movie, that was the Hollowell Bridge. It was built in 1880. And it actually, you know, some of these bridges have been moved, but this one is still in its original site over what's called the Middle River a little bit southeast of Winterset. And a lot of the, all these bridges were renovated in the 1990s, and this one was the most expensive at $225,000. Cedar Bridge is our next bridge, and as you can see, it's open to vehicles. It's the only one of these bridges that's actually still open to traffic. It was built in 1883. It's only 76 feet long. And this was the bridge on the original book, the Bridges of Madison County. It was built over Cedar Creek a few miles from here but then it was moved here in 1921, and this is actually still Cedar Creek. So moved over just a different location on the creek. In 2019, it was uh, destroy nearly destroyed by arson, as you can see in the picture, and then was rebuilt and opened during the Covered Bridge Festival in 2019. Mm -hmm. to the Hogback Covered Bridge. This bridge was built in 1884 by Harvey Jones and George Foster. They designed four of the six bridges, these six covered bridges that we're checking out here in Madison County. It's 97 feet long and it's in its original location that it was built in 1884. It gets its name from the limestone ridge, which forms the west end of the valley here, and was renovated in 1992 at $120,000 cost. I went underneath the bridge and got this cool view. It was the only bridge I was able to go under and check out. And then you can see the new bridge over to the old hogback covered bridge. This is the final bridge on the kind of official tour of the Bridges of Madison County. It's the most well-known because of uh, the several scenes that were filmed right here. Clint Eastwood was down here. He found the note up on the bridge and, um, you know, they were here multiple times doing uh, different scenes. 
The Roseman Covered Bridge was built in 1883 by the same Harvey Jones and George Foster I spoke about earlier. It's 107 feet long. It was renovated in 1992. It cost $152,000 to renovate it. It's also known as the Haunted Bridge, where two sheriffs trapped a jail escapee in 1892. It said the man rose up straight through the roof of the bridge and disappeared. He was never found, and it was decided that anyone capable of such a feat must be innocent. Right near the Roseman Covered Bridge is this gift shop. Had a lot of cool stuff in here. Got me a t-shirt and lots of, lots of interesting stuff and nods to the scene there right next to the bridge and really, really cool. I'm guessing it's a bird feeder, but really, really cool design. The bridges are all pretty easy to find. This is maybe the most out of the way, a few miles down some dirt roads. And since we're here on the same day as the Covered Bridge Festival, I figure let's go back there. Uh, there's maybe a couple other things I want to check out, but we'll go to the festival first and see what that's all about. We are back in the town of Winterset, Iowa for the Covered Bridge Festival. It's been going on since 1970 and John Wayne Drive right here in downtown because this was the birthplace of John Wayne. It has a really nice courthouse and the square is, is a lot of old buildings and obviously for a festival like this a lot of stuff to see. I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since. I don't know it. Well, I'm stuck in both summer's prison. And time keeps dragging on. This is the diner that Clint Eastwood stopped and uh, had a meal. And if you remember, he ended up sitting next to a lady that she was kind of the gossip of the town. So pretty interesting to, to come by and see the diner. And the John Wayne Museum right there. This is just off the courthouse square. Outside, kind of their walk of fame. They have every movie that he was ever in. Obviously, True Grit being one of his more famous, but that was a really neat little walk to see all the movies and then just around the corner is the house that John Wayne was born. There's a lot of interesting stuff in this area if you walk around town they do a really nice job with history and showing off the things they're proud of in Winterset. And this is on one of the side of the buildings I thought it was really neat it had all the different covered bridges and different you know times earlier in their life and and maybe some of them were covered bridges, some of them weren't, but uh, you know, all the different people that worked on them through different bridges in Madison County. And so, once again, great job for Madison County kind of giving the tourists what they want to see. And here is the parade and the Grand Marshals. And I'll let you just sit back and watch a little bit of the Covered Bridge Festival Parade. kind of expecting to see a float with a covered bridge at the covered bridge festival but just kind of a regular parade 
It's probably the first parade I've watched from beginning to end in 20 years. As I was there, I was kind of trying to see what else is to see in Winterset, and I found a couple things. Um, obviously, we've seen all the bridges. We've gone downtown and seen kind of the city, and now there's a state park a few miles away that has a tunnel slash bridge, so we're going to see about, about that. And then the last thing is kind of out, you know, on the edge of the northeast part of the county is the house that in the movie Bridges of Madison County that Fran Francesca, that she lived in. to enter the only tunnel in the entire state of Iowa. Was originally built in 1858 by William Harmon and his sons. It was much smaller. It was designed to carry water from a river down to a sawmill. Very cool. And then once you get through there just to the right, you're going to go, I guess you'd call this a bridge, a very unique bridge of Madison County. That was pretty fun. Had two bridges, uh, one tunnel and one over the water or through the water. So unique little spot there in the park. We've made it to our final stop on the Madison County trip and down that path was Francesca's house where a lot of the movie was set and it's you know no trespassing um, you know not able to visit anymore the house is in massive disrepair I took um, my drone flew it up over there so I'll show that to you as we're sitting here talking and and you might think it's kind of you know unfortunate or sad to see there's nothing here to you can't go up and look at it or anything like that and the house is falling apart but I think it's kind of like I don't know it's kind of cool because in the movie she passes away and you know she has her kids that are there that are you know at the at the house and they're reading her diaries and journals and things like that and I could imagine they just kind of leave this place to become abandoned and fall apart, kind of, you know, like if the movie was real life. So I don't know. It doesn't make me sad. Actually, it's kind of fitting, I guess, for the ending of uh, this video and the last thing being the abandoned house where Francesca lived. So I don't know. What'd you think of Madison County? I'd say it's a terrific place to visit. I would certainly highly recommend it. Um, you don't have to come during the covered uh, covered bridge festival, but you know, lots of things to see. It was probably a little bit busier with more people visiting all the bridges today, uh, but it wasn't by any stretch of the imagination very busy or crowded. And it's a beautiful part of Iowa. People were really nice and the history is cool with not only, you know, the movie history if you're into that but even if you're not into the movie the history of this area with the bridges and and the different things like the state park and the tunnel and just very interesting place to visit so good job madison county that's what i go to the movies for to feel like other people feel to know what they know to live in rural iowa and see an old truck come down the driveway and think who's this <laughs> you know fun.